<coughs> Bonjour, euh, je m'appelle Bernard Zwingdo. Hello, médecin, my name is Bernard Zwingdo. I'm a physician. I used to be a research manager at INSERM for many years. And I'm in charge of uh, relations between health and biodiversity. Well, maybe we should agree on a number of definitions. The first one would be health. For everybody, health is about not being sick. But the definition provided by WHO a few years ago is much more complex. It implies a state of total physical and mental well-being and social well-being, not limited to the absence of disease or disability. It's a much wider definition. And it covers uh, well-being itself. It's really very much a definition of well-being and uh, the will to live. Another definition is that of biodiversity provided recently by Gilles Boeuf during the uh, introductory uh, lecture for his uh, annual chair at the Collège de France, which he occupied this year. Biodiversity does not only include the number of species and their relative abundance on Earth, but also speciation mechanisms functional ecology, research work on nature, which may uh, be useful, and protection strategies. So we're within the framework of the topic. Another definition, disease. A disease, you will find I don't use the word pathology because pathology is a science of diseases, but diseases, a common cold, cancer, or foot ache, are a conflict between our genetic uh, wealth and the environment. On the left-hand side, uh, you see the influence of genetics, and on the right-hand side, the influence uh, of the environment. On the last part in blue, at the bottom of the slide, you see that a uh, disease uh, such as drypanocytosis or mucor uh, genetic diseases uh, are very uh, are essentially uh, based on genes, and uh, the environment does not influence uh, this type of uh, disease, such as cystic fibrosis. But at the bottom right-hand side, we see diseases uh, or mortality that have nothing to do with genetics. If you are run down by a bus, this has nothing to do with genetics. And in the middle, we have daily medicine, a very uh, simple example on the left-hand side, obesity. One might have thought that obesity was simply due to the environment, but uh, obesity can be inherited uh, up to 60%. So genetics play an essential role, but it's not, nothing to do with the genetics of uh, fat tissues, but the genetic of appetite. People who have uh, abnormal uh, Appetite genes tend to eat too much and put on weight and become obese. Now, you can never become obese regardless of your genetic inheritance when you live in places where you don't have enough money to buy food or when there is no food available. In everyday medicine, we have high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, type 2 diabetes, which are half genetic in origin and half environmental. Both factors uh, contribute. And there is finally cancers. Cancers are not entirely entirely genetic uh, in the uh, normal meaning of the term. There are inherited types of cancers, but they're rare. Cancers are the, a disease of the gene, but they're not a genetic disease. They're not a family disease, or rarely. Or else the cancer impacts the germinal uh, cells, uh, ovum, uh, cells in the ovum or in the uh, semen. One may therefore think that disease is a genetic response to variations in the environment. We have a graph here in three parts, uh, the environment in pink, the environment covers uh, changes in temperature, rain, uh, the existence of microbes uh, in the atmosphere, a uh, badly driven bus or vehicle, everything that is uh, outside the human being. And on the right-hand side, we have the genotype, the genotype what we are, what we inherit from our mother and our father, the structure of our genes. And in blue, we have disease. Disease is a phenotype, the expression of both environmental and genetic factors on our genetic uh, 
Does it considere like legacy? The genotype would therefore be uh, the way that we react to our environment, a very specific and very individual way to react to our environment. Now, I'd like to introduce what we're going to discuss later. You might be surprised seeing that I'm talking about uh, health generally and that I'm going. Uh, Away, I'm moving away from biodiversity. Well, this is because I don't think that we can separate biodiversity from the various uh, impacts that uh, human activity has on us and on biodiversity. Human activity has beneficial effects, and we grow older, we live longer, because the people discovered uh, how to uh, cure some diseases and how to improve our health. Children mortality has decreased. Uh, we have uh, advertising on TV saying that we should eat five uh, fruit or vegetables every day, and we all benefit from therapeutic progress. However, there is something one should not forget. We cannot separate these three elements from each other. And we cannot, or rather, what you see in the middle, in the uh, oval box, are the impacts on public health. All the external factors have an impact on public health. Not only environmental, systemic, large-scale impacts such as biodiversity and climate changes, but also other factors uh, will have a more serious impact on uh, public health. For instance, uh, climatic changes, the impact will be much greater for a poor farmer in Congo than a rich company owner in Germany. And this is the blue square box. The lifestyle difference uh, obviously makes a difference in the impact. And there are changes in the socioeconomic activity also. When a country starts uh, doing better, this has an impact on public health. So these factors cannot be discriminated. And we have to talk about globalization. I'm going to tell you about the general, the global ecology of health. And I will not limit myself to some specific problems. There's a holistic approach. The detail of my presentation can be found very soon in a book which I'm about to publish. The uh, editor will be Belin for a global health ecology, and I would like to pay tribute to uh, somebody who unfortunately passed away not very long ago, Jacques Weber, who was... Um, a scientist who worked on ecology, and he was the one who suggested the title for my book, and I would like to pay tribute to his uh, research. Thank you.